Hey guys, welcome to CRV Live. That's right, this is our second week coming to you live from San Jose, Costa Rica, bringing you everything Costa Rica related. If you're watching, please get your questions in. We would love to hear from you. This week, my guest is Derek Schlager. Derek, thanks hey. for getting in touch. Thanks for getting, getting here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a De pleasure. Derek is our business director, business business relations director. Business relations director. And for those of you, those of us who don't know what that means, explain your job yeah. slightly. Well, it sounds fancy, but it's not. It's, it's not like that. Uh -huh. I'm actually in charge of uh, managing of the business relationships for uh, the Namu Travel Group. What it means is that I'm in charge of uh, negotiating, discussing, selecting, and promoting the most beautiful places and tours and activities in Costa Rica. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And basically what that means is, uh, it means you're in charge of making sure everybody gets the very best experience yeah. in the hotels that you have to kind of at least go through a process. Correct. We're hotels, very... tours, transfers. Yes, we're very picky. Just to give you an example, there's over 6,000 hotels. And we only 6, work... 6,000 in Costa Rica? In Costa Rica alone. And we only work with uh, 115. So what it means is that our, our selection process is, is uh, it's, it's very picky and we try to select the best of the best on the different price ranges and different quality ranges for, uh, for our customers. Yeah, sure. So if you, if you select us as your, as your travel agency, you, you will have a great time because we already did the work for you. Sure, I, I had no idea there were 6,000 hotels in the country. Well, that was the last number I've heard. I'm yeah, yeah, pretty no, sure. sure. It's, Maybe less now. But, but you are a great person to speak to, especially when it comes to the tourism industry, the actual hotels on the ground, and to give us some feedback about where the hoteliers, I'll do my uh, how, how they're doing, how the employees are doing, the tourism in general. Okay. That's fantastic. But before I ask you some of those um, questions, as ever, guys, I'm going to give you the live Costa Rica headlines, at least as of yesterday, when it comes to where we are with the coronavirus uh, and the current tourism situation. Again, Costa Rica continues to do really well, not just in the world, Central America. It's leading the way forward to keep the spread of the virus to a minimum down here. We're certainly waiting to know a little bit more about what the government are now doing to help the tourism industry specifically. But medically speaking, the stats as of yesterday are as follows. From May the 18th, there are 866 known cases. The good news is 579, 575 recoveries and now we only have 281 active cases with unfortunately 10 deaths. Um, the other good news moving forward is as of yesterday, from May the 18th to May the 31st, we have a bunch of small businesses beginning to open. Yep. Beaches are now opening again. Hotels with 20 rooms or less can open at 50%. Uh, restaurants during the week and our restrictions have been uh, liberated, I believe, from early in the morning to 10 p.m. at night. Um, Derek, from a local perspective, you know, how does, how does that affect you? It's good news, right? It is good news because we are starting slowly but surely to reopen the, uh, the industry and the country. It's, uh, it's a breath of fresh air for our, uh, small businesses. Uh, you know, Costa Rica specializes in small boutique hotels. A lot of those have 20 rooms or less. Uh, and, and this is an opportunity for them to try out new um, coronavirus uh, yeah. way of doing business right sure. uh, so we rely now on local tourism uh, you know I, I've talked to some of my uh, partners and uh, for them it's a good opportunity to challenge themselves on the new processes the way they clean the hotels the, the way they welcome the, the, the guests yeah uh, and even uh, on the food and beverage side so it's, it's good uh, this is putting us one step closer to opening our borders within the next one or two months for uh, sure. And, and, you know, start getting new customers, international customers, which is what we rely on. And that's a, that's a good point. The, the border situation is as it was last week, currently the 15th of June, Correct. as we know. Yeah. Uh, we're still waiting, of course, um, like you guys and, and many people around the world. That There's a lot of variables. We don't know the answers yet. I'm sure we might have new news at the end of this next two-week break, yeah. probably June the 1st, yeah. I, I imagine. Um, and yeah, like you say, that would make a massive difference. And then once the borders open, hopefully the airports can start their sanitization projects. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, the airlines hopefully start to follow that. Yeah, so, if you look at, it, at other international businesses, uh, you know, you, you've seen uh, China coming back at least, at least on, a, on a local level. Uh, some of the flights flying again on a local level. I yeah. read this morning that some uh, airlines are, are flying again from Spain to 
Cancun, so there's okay. also some hope there. Yeah. And uh, but I think you know we've we've done a very good job in Costa Rica. Our mortality rate is less than zero point six. Yeah. The best in Latin America. It's super low. So sure. so puts us on a very strong position. And and you know I, we've heard also and read customers customer feedback saying you know I would love to be in Costa Rica right now instead of being in other countries. I, I've seen a lot of people. I right. mean online, socially, even you know what's some great news for the tourists that. We're not necessarily stuck here, but the tourists that came in after December, their visas have been extended now until the yep. middle of August. Same. So that's great news, and Costa Rica is certainly laugh, looking after you know, many of those travelers that are, are, are in the country. Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's generally positive news. The headlines are, are generally looking good week on week. Of course, we're still waiting uh, on the government to give us more inclination. Yeah, uh, national parks travel. opened up uh, yesterday, actually. That's really exciting. So, you know, very, yeah. very strict rules, but at least some of our local tourists and international yeah. tourists living in Costa Rica were able to, you know, walk the volcanoes or, you know, visit in uh, national parks by the beach. Yeah, the famous ones, Manuel Antonio yeah, exactly. and Condele Vieja. And it's exciting to see that the government are really pushing local tourism yeah. before the international tourists are able to come back. It's certainly a good um, practice, perhaps, to test. Yes, where and, see, and, and it's important also that our local business owners understand the difference between an international traveler and a, and a local traveler. Yeah. You know? And uh, so, so we have to be flexible enough, even with Costa Ricans today, on the price point, on the cancellation policies, and how we book, sure. uh, and, and, and the overall experience. Yeah. So it's an opportunity for us as, as Costa Ricans to get to know this beautiful country. Yeah, no, exactly. I, again, traveling around the country, sometimes I meet a lot of, obviously, Costa Ricans doing the job. And uh, yeah, a lot of the time we get, we're lucky to be working tourists. We, we see a lot more, so it's great that the, the local people here are encouraged to travel if they can as well. All right. We get we get a lot of uh, messages from you guys. Um, there's some messages coming in of you guys watching. So hello to everybody. Um, Esther Silvers on Facebook. Hello, April, Stephanie. Thanks guys for getting in touch. Pablo, as ever, is behind the screens organizing everything. He's going to get your questions into us, which we're going to ask you later. Already got a question from Stephanie. We will be getting to that shortly, Stephanie. Um, but Derek, let me ask you some direct questions now. Okay. Um, in your experience in the last couple of months, how have the hotels been dealing with the coronavirus pandemic here? Well, it's been very difficult. You know, you, you, need, you guys need to understand that when we got this crisis, we were in the middle of high season. So yeah, right. March, over, March. March overall is our big, busiest month of the year. You know, if you, if you put it in perspective on the entire month, so it was a surprise for everybody. Uh, we were not ready, as the rest of the world was not. And uh, uh, it was a huge hit, because from one day to the other, we had hundreds of thousands of reservations, and then everything's gone. Yeah. So, so I think that uh, we went through this uh, normal process of panic, and then uh, you know, understanding a little bit the situation, and yeah. then act, doing something about it. Um, you guys did, uh, did an outstanding video on, on, on promoting Costa Rica and, and not canceling your vacation, but yeah. postponing it, which helps a lot in terms of keeping um, the people uh, in their current workplace. Right? That's, uh, that's a really good point. And thanks for mentioning that support Costa Rica campaign video. The idea, like you say, was very much to let people know the effect that canceling yeah. Obviously, nobody knew at the time, but even rescheduling it for a year later, yeah. the vacation. And, and makes at least difference. from our agency perspective, we were, we've were been able to reschedule, I would, I would say, maybe more than 80% of our, of our current vacations, which is amazing. So yeah. the support that we've gotten from our customers is incredible. Uh, also, a good number to know is that tourism industry represents more than 7% of, the, of Costa Rica's GDP. Yeah, it's massive. It's, it's, it's massive. So oh, I've heard even, it's even more up than 500,000 500, jobs. Exactly. With a population of 5.2 million in the country, that's you know, up to 25%, yes. percent, no, no, 20, 10% you're talking about. Yeah. Like up to 500,000 people yeah. in the country. And this is why the impact economically following this, it, it's, it's massive. You know? But you know, now, now that we've been dealing with this for over maybe two, two, two months, months or so, yeah. uh, it's also very nice to see how the industry relies on goodwill, partnership, friendship. We are on this together. At the beginning, it was very difficult for us to manage the crisis, even you know, within your friends in the industry. But I nowadays, you, yeah. it's, uh, we understand that we have to fight this together on a common, at a common pace, right? So yeah. uh, 
I think that currently business owners understand the importance of employees. Uh, that, you know, Costa Rica's number one talent is people. For sure. We are, we're lucky with, you know, to have these beautiful beaches and national parks, but yeah. overall the people makes a difference. And, and I'm pretty positive that uh, in the near future, uh, the industry will bounce back um, and we will have the, those employees back to their uh, duties again. How quickly did that realization kick in? that this is a, a communal effort, when everybody's obviously panicking and not knowing. It took a while. It took a while. Yeah. See, you know, even for us, you know, you got to go through the process again. You know, yeah. it's normal. And everybody's on, at a different level. And you're yeah. working with 100 Everybody. plus partners. Yes, exactly. So it was difficult, but, uh, you know, I think we've, we've built a relationship for the last 20 years with these partners. And sure. for us, it wasn't that difficult just because we had, we were already there. Yeah. Uh, so we used our... Our, our friendship and our loyalty uh, and uh, the way we do business and most of our hotels and, and tour operators understood the situation. That's why we've been able to help our customers in, in a way that other agencies or online travel agencies or maybe other uh, sure. uh, tourism industry uh, uh, divisions they haven't been able to do. If you just do some research, you know, reviews, social media, different platforms, you can see yeah. the problems other people have been having. And I guess that's one of the advantages of having 20 years in yeah. the field, specifically planning these vacations. The, like you say, the goodwill is incredibly valuable when you need it most. It is. Yeah. How are, how are they going to open again? You know, now the government have just said, as of yesterday, hotels with 20 rooms or more can open at 50%. What kind of things have you been hearing about from the hoteliers? What changes are they going to implement See. when people can start coming back? Well, you know, what, what's funny is that now that we don't have customers, it's been a very busy time. So, so the reason I'm doing, saying this is because, of course, some hotels have less staff. You know, some hotels have made, taken the decision of sending people on vacation or, or other decisions. And, uh, but they've been very busy understanding what is the new business model. Correct. You know, keeping uh -huh. keeping the, the hotel clean, uh, the way they will do check-ins, yeah. the way the way that they will manage food and beverage. Uh, so it's not super clear to me yet because I haven't started traveling again. Yeah. Um, I will start next week visiting some of the places to understand the, you know the small boutique hotels how they are looking into this new future, at least until we get some sort of a okay. vaccine or something. Yeah. Right. Uh, but uh, it's going to be difficult. So, you know, ha small hotels with 50% capacity, it's very difficult financially. Sure, of course. Uh, but at least it's something. Uh -huh. Maybe you can give us an update. And then in the coming episodes, of course. I'd love to hear your feedback, hear about what some of the changes have been, and maybe I can let you know, some of our audience know. See. That'd be great. Um, how it, as a question that came up from, from last week's, and it's similar to something that Casey, uh, again, our co-founder, tried to answer. People are asking, you know, what will happen if my booked hotel doesn't open? You know, can I change my reservation with CRV? Obviously, 115 hotels, some of them are going to open at different times. See, we work with the best. And so we are super confident that all of our partners will make it through this difficult period. If for some reason one hotel decides not to reopen on, in the short term, yeah. we, of course, will manage that reservation and change it to something that could be even better. Um, uh, most hotels are super flexible now, and right, they, uh, and they understand the importance of, of of keeping the ball rolling and, and managing uh, the customer anxiety. Right. Yeah. So if for some reason we cannot use your reservation on the cur on, on your current hotel, we will find something better for you. Sure. Uh, I can give you that guarantee. Okay, that's good to know. This might be a more difficult question, but I wanted to pose it to you, especially as an industry expert watching the government's movements. Um, again, we agree that you know, politically they've handle, handled the managing of the coronavirus spread really well. Yeah. But how do you view the tourism industry in general? How are they going to reopen? What's your perspective on where we are? What do you think might happen in the coming weeks and months? See, uh, because we rely so heavily on tourism, you know, Costa Rica itself, we, we will make, it's going to take a while. Uh, the way that I see that the industry will bounce back is through, uh, and this is a common term now, it's through bubbles. Uh -huh. right? uh, 
our, our number one stream of uh, tourism comes from the States. You know, the U.S. is having a hard time now. It's been hit hard by, by the coronavirus. Uh, but I'm confident that they would make it as well. So maybe, you know, a bubble with the States, uh, maybe a couple of countries from, from, from the U.K., mm -hmm. maybe the U.K. or sure. uh, from Europe. Uh, so, uh, I think we will have to be creative in the way that we get the flights in Costa Rica. Uh, there's some efforts being made by the government. I read that, the, uh, for example, fuel, which is expensive in Costa Rica, yeah. the government is going to do something about air fuel to uh, you know, reduce the price and promote planes uh, coming back. Uh, there's a... Uh, an entrance tax that every tourist or living tax that every yeah, church yeah, yeah. has to pay. So I'm, I've heard that that money goes straight to the ICT for marketing purposes. I'm pretty sure that they will do something with that. Which is the we, Instituto de Costa Rica de Turismo, the yes. tourism, uh, the Chamber of Tourism here yeah. in Costa Rica. They just announced that two million dollar investment on marketing pretty soon. Okay, uh, might not sound sound uh, like a lot of money, but for Costa Rica, they create some fun stuff. I've yeah. seen many of their ad campaigns. Do you remember See. the singing sloth? Uh, that did quite well in the Same. U.S. Visibility. That's Same. good news. And, and you know, we, we are also lucky to have uh, very smart people here and very creative. So yeah. we will find a way to pamper our customers back. Uh, the industry, the tourism industry of Costa Rica is super renowned in, worldwide. And uh, I don't remember the exact number, but we are up there in the top five destinations in the world. For sure. And that is not going to change. It's actually going to change for good uh -huh. now that we have been able to manage this crisis in the way we have. Yeah, that's true. It, just, it bodes very well for the country. That's correct. Um, and they won't do it as well until it's safe. I, I've been living here for 14 years. I believe that. Right. It won't be opened sooner than it should. Yeah, my guess, I don't know if I should say this or not, yeah, but it, my it, guess is know, that... <laughs> It's not going to happen until mid-July. Okay. And, and the reason why I'm saying this is that we are not going to risk it, you know, such a good job internally. We're not going to risk it to have uh, people coming from other parts of the world into Costa Rica with the risk of infection. That's, sure. that's reality, right? Even if you stay home for 14 days, uh, my guess is that right after mid-year vacation, in Costa Rica there's, there's a mid-year vacation term uh, from July first to July 15, uh -huh. give or take. Yeah, yeah. My guess is that right after that, they might reopen the, the okay. ticket. But again, keep let's keep watching the news to see what is told yeah. before we make any crazy decisions. Cancelling your trip, you know, because it's we had a question, if my trip is on July the 15th last week, should I be rescheduling now? Should I be cancelling? No. Again, we're in the middle of May, towards the end of May, if you can wait another week. We're going to be flexible. The, our partners are flexible, yes. so we understand everybody's situation is unique. We will manage every it. specific situation. Yeah. And in July, if we reopen by July, it's a beautiful time to come to Costa Rica. Yeah. It's a midsummer. It's a midsummer in the middle of the year. Exactly. It's beautiful. Fantastic questions. We've got some great Facebook questions coming in, right, guys. I'm going to get to that just in a second. But before the questions, we like to have our deal of the day segment. Um, which every week we kind of let you know what Costa Rican Vacations is promoting. And actually, we're going to push last week's uh, deal again. Now, again, it's quite vague, um, but I wanted to push it with Derek. It's our secret special offer. Like Casey said, so secret, we can't actually promote it. And this isn't a joke. It's actually true. But Derek, I know we have specific uh, specials with certain hotels, Cayuga, different properties, you know, Arenas del Mar, a Gran of the Oro. We've also got El Silencio, a lovely boutique, a Los Altos, I think. In yeah, the this is a huge opportunity just because the, the hotels, the participating hotels are so beautiful. And yeah. The price is so beautiful. I had some you know, crazy if prices. If I say something yeah. else, I might get fired. Yeah, okay. Because this is super secret. Yeah, this is what I've been hearing. But and, I, and I heard a rate the other day and I was like, don't miss it. With breakfast and, and dinner reservations for one night, uh, yeah. this was in Tabacon specifically. You will never find these price points yeah. anywhere. Hence the reason it's not published. So you need to get in touch uh, with us directly. You can reach us on Facebook. You yeah. can call the toll-free number, go to our website. One of our travel consultants will get in touch with you. 
and we'll get right back and we can let you know personally what might work for you. And that could be traveling in the fall, could be Christmas. Yeah, we have everything for everybody. We have yeah. mountain, beautiful hotels, we have beach hotels, we have everything in between. And I also know Costa Rica Vacations have started offering exciting gift vouchers. So yeah. even if you're not ready to book a vacation yet, you can purchase a gift voucher and when you're ready, you can apply it. And yes, or just give it to someone else. You know. Or give it to someone else. That's yeah. a great gift. The gift of travel after this, you know, right. Costa Rica's here for you. Okay, I'm going to ask you now, um, we have a segment, the top three. Every week, I'm going to ask all of our industry experts, friends, colleagues in the tourism industry, their top three preferences. You are our hotels guy. You, this might be a difficult question. That's a tricky question. But I want to know, You're get me in trouble with, with you nearly 10 years <laughs> doing this, your personal three favorite hotels. Oh, okay. Uh, and why? It don't necessarily have to be okay. in order, but I'd like to know. No, I think I have it pretty clear. So, oh, okay. okay. So whenever I travel with my family, just yeah. because it's convenient, uh, my number one hotel is the Westin. Okay. Uh, it's it's located on one of the most beautiful beaches in Costa Rica, Conchal. It's, it's super white sand. It's uh, in the north of the country. In it's Guanacaste. beautiful. It's you, you know it's a swimmable sea. Uh, it's an all-inclusive place where your kids will have fun 24-7. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I remember my kids coming to my room at midnight asking me if they can order a, a chocolate cake. Yeah. And of course they can do it. It's 24-7 uh -huh. service. So, just because it's convenient and beautiful, the Westin for families. Yeah. No questions. Uh, romantic getaway. I have two. Uh, okay. On the beach, my number one could be Casa Camaleon. Really nice. Very nice. Yeah. It's in it's in a bay, so you have different views on your left. Where is it located right. exactly? It's, uh, it's uh, Playa Peca. I think it's in Las Catalinas. Las Catalinas. It's one side. of Casey's favorite places. He mentioned. It's Catalinas. beautiful. Every villa has a plunge pool. The views are amazing. Yeah. Casa Camaleon. Right between the, Sugar Beach and Catalinas. Yeah, exactly. It's right next to Las Catalinas. Uh, the restaurant is incredible, so it's very nice. That is the romantic getaway on the beach. Okay. And there's another romantic getaway on the mountains, which I love, it, which is El Silencio Lodge. My personal favorite hotel it's in the country. It's Absolutely love it. Right. Yeah, Pablo agrees. Yeah, we were shooting there yeah. uh, you know, a few months Again, ago. Again, main, a bunch of activities, beautiful rooms, outstanding uh, service and yeah. meals. It's very, even dr the drive there. It's, I know, it's and when you get there, you're up in the cloud forest. The temperature drops a bit. They've got a beautiful river running through the property, right. a bonfire outside. It's very nice. The food, organic. Awesome. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And then on the, what I call the old Costa Rica side, which is the southern side in, uh -huh. in Golfito, and, uh, you know, Drake Bay, all the, yeah, that, that area. Yeah. Um, Down in the Osa region. The... Uh, What's the name of this place? Aguila? Uh, no, Playa, the Playa Cativo. Oh, Playa Cativo. Now the Golfito, inside fair. of the bay. Yeah, you, you feel that, you know, that, that's still Costa Rica, but it's not yet developed. Just yeah. to, get, to get there, you got to fly there, then take a boat. So it's, it's an experience yeah. in itself. You get it's a little bit beautiful. Of yeah. and, and you have like your own private beach because it's, it's beachfront. It's a different type of beach, sure. uh, but it's beautiful. Really, Super really nice. warm service as well. Yeah. And it's quite unique when you have to fly there from San Jose mm -hmm. and you fly over the rainforest, then you get in a boat and you're driving through this. You would see dolphins on the way to field. your hotel, like yeah. even whales on the way to your I can, hotel. I can so vouch for that person. It's very, very nice. Excellent. Well, that, that wasn't too hard. And you even gave us four. Yeah. Um, and it was actually... But like I love them all. I just you want to say all. that. Exactly. Exactly. I, I love the base. them all. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> um, funnily enough, some of your questions are coming in um, and Stephanie... Uh, Sups, I think your last name is. I hope I pronounced that right. She was asking, what is the best hotel? You've just given us for uh, the Western, if you're looking for a family all-inclusive. Casa Chameleon and El Silencio for romantic options at the beach in the forest. Right. And then off the beaten path down at uh, Playa Cativa. So, Stephanie, I hope that's uh, answered your question. Colin uh, on Facebook, Colin Brownlee, has actually asked a couple of questions. See if we can knock these out. Um, How's the hotel industry going to deal with all the Airbnb rentals that will be cheap and attractive for local tourism? Good question, Colin. It's a, it's a good question, and it's something that in the, within the industry we ask ourselves. How yeah. can we compete against that? But the thing is that it's a, it's a different business model, and also the product is different. Uh, my personal opinion, again, is that uh, future travelers are going to rely more on hotels rather than rentals just because of the way they're received and the, also the cleanliness yeah. of the property itself. 
Um, there, there have been some issues with Airbnb and VRBO. Uh -huh. uh, so I don't want to say negative things about those, sure. those businesses, but I, I strongly believe that the hotel industry is, is more formal uh, and it, it, it will survive better. The cleanliness is an interesting point, especially if you're having your room cleaned daily, perhaps yep. twice daily now with the changes, we'll have to see what happens. See. But yeah, the sanitization. And even the yeah. overall amenities and services, right? You, yeah. You know, you have, you have the restaurants, you have the bars, you have the spas, you have everything that you cannot find on a BRBO or BRBO yeah. business model. But it really depends on what the customer really wants. Sure. And Colin, also to your point, uh, it's an interesting concept that obviously a lot of these are... Uh, these prices on Airbnb, they are competitive, but because the hotels are opening locally, they're really bringing their rates down as well for national tourism. Yeah, so and remember, and remember that, and I want, I want to say this because I also truly believe in this, is that when you stay in a hotel, you are giving to the, to the people who yeah. works there. So you are supporting locally the businesses. When you stay on a BRB or BNB, the money goes away. Yeah. Uh, uh, to those big corporations, right? For sure. And uh, and that is important to me, so that's why I mentioned it. So it's something to consider. Uh, I, I, I've done both. I've stayed on an Airbnb and, of course, in hotels. And yeah. I, I uh, prefer heavily the hotel business just because there's so much better. They pamper you way better. Sure. sure. See, well, uh, humanity. I, I would say that, uh, or, and friendships. Uh, it's amazing to see what people can do in, in times like this. Yeah, right. You know, helping others. Yeah. And being supportive. Uh, just, just by having 80 plus percent of people not canceling but rescheduling, yeah. it gives me a good vibe. Because yeah. most, you know, some people would do it for themselves, but most people would do it thinking, if I, if I get my money back, I'm impacting someone else in Costa Rica. Sure. And, and that, that is really nice to see. So for me, that's the number one thing that, that uh, I see during this crisis. Yeah. How, how have the world has reacted to help others? Yeah, and from what I've seen, you know, from the, uh, the foreign nationals living here as well as the locals, the amount of charities that have opened up yeah. and the Absolutely. small businesses, all the hotels that are turning their own properties to helping out the local people yeah. that have suffered from either losing their jobs, don't have food immediately, and everybody's green coming together yeah. to do what they can. Uh, that's, that's fantastic. Great question, Jake. Um, and finally, uh, Yesenia Garcia on Facebook. Hope I said your name again, right, Yesenia? Our family plans to visit on July the 5th to July the 13th. Kind of goes back. Maybe should we postpone towards the end of the year? Yeah, I, I would recommend that uh, she waits. It's a beautiful time. Uh, waits to rebook or wait? It's June or July. July, the 5th to the 13th. See, so we don't know if July is going to be open or not. Uh -huh. We don't know that yet. Sure. So we should wait to see what the government will say in terms of reopening the, the, the borders and yeah. the airports. If, if the airport is reopened, it's a beautiful time to come. Yeah. It's, okay. it's mid-vacation, it it's exactly. small summer, yeah. uh, but we, we're getting some rain today. It's not going to rain in July. The scenery is going to be super green and beautiful. So yeah. my recommendation would be to wait. Uh, just a short time and so and if you can just any maybe a week a week or two yeah and perhaps, let us, perhaps let us get know. to the, perhaps get to the uh, early june when we think we're going to have an update on june the first See. and that's still that's in your possible. case five weeks five and a half weeks before you travel See. and then you know and then and then stay in touch yeah and course. if need be push it slightly just, we'll just, help you out with that yeah just let us know and we will help you okay Guys, fantastic. Well, we are absolutely killing it with time. I think it's great information. We have two segments left. We're over 30 minutes, but I'm going to do this anyway, because uh, this is an exciting segment that we wanted to ask every guest um, every week. I've delved into your Instagram account. Oh. Um, I've got a couple of pictures here, and I want you to ask. Pablo's going to get up on the screen. I believe we have a picture here with one of our colleagues. I think it's Claudia. Uh, Derek, what is going on here? So. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, that's Claudia. I like the glasses. That's Claudia. Oh, I only have her the foot. So can you, can you explain it? You well, this, some this, ceremony? This, I think this was part of our uh, uh, Namu Oscars celebration. Uh, I believe so, right? And uh, of course, I won. Oh, you and, did? So and, you won an Oscar. And, and Claudia, an office Oscar. Claudia always wins. She, she's okay. been winning the um, Integrity, Integrity Oscar for over 25 years. Did you take it off of this year? See, so I think we were both winners and we decided to take a picture together. She's okay. a very good friend of mine. Love her. Excellent. And uh, 
this is the way we celebrate it with the beer and uh, in a picture. That's awesome. And I think, yeah. and there's one more. So hopefully, in a in a post COVID era, we can get back to our office Oscars and yes. have more fun pictures like this. The last picture that I have to show you because it's one of the best ones. I think the guys can see it on the screen. What is going on in this picture here? <laughs> oh man, this is funny. So this is a car. Well, Tros, Carlos, and Adriana. So this is your team. Yeah, Got this, this used to be my team. See, uh -huh. uh, this was a custom party back in like, two years ago, maybe. Uh huh. Halloween, uh, maybe. Yeah. So I I don't usually use customs. Okay. Uh, so I'm not wearing anything, but uh, yeah, okay. I, I remember the very beginning of this party, but not the end. Okay, and why is that? Did, were you influenced? By well, anything? if you see, I'm drinking some sort of a rum here because. But I, I don't remember what the brand. Okay. And I don't want to remember. <laughs> but but uh, you see, Tross is dressed like a... He called it the Pato or something. Pato Loco. Pato, Pato. Pa Pato Loco. No. Pato, B. B. Pato, what is that in Spanish? It's a Mexican-American. Okay. Gang, gangster. 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 Uh, well, I will say this leads very well into our next segment. This is one of the reasons I chose it. So every week, Tasty Tico Treats. Yeah. Okay. Last week we had Casey testing our seven-year-old Costa Rican rum versus the classic cacique. Yep, and he actually went for the cacique. Oh. Amazingly enough, um, we've uh, we're not going to go as strong uh, okay. in terms of spirits. But we're going to keep it with a drink theme. So, as you are, you know, you're a local Costa Rican. We've got three of the most famous Costa Rican beers. Okay. Okay. So we have the Pilsen. We have more recently Bavaria. This one's a chill and the classic Imperial. So if you guys have been to Costa Rica, you will know about these drinks. Now you call yourself a Costa Rican who likes his beer, right? Yes. As most of you may or may not know, I don't drink too much. There's um, no better beer than our local beer. Okay, I am from the UK, I've heard otherwise. My dad traveled yeah. here, he wasn't so sure. I am gonna uh, test these with you. Okay, perfect. But the difference is, it's already 10 o'clock somewhere else. It's, uh, you're gonna Funny be, story though. You're you gonna know. be blindfolded doing this. I, can, I want you I to. Can do this. I, I can want do you this. to tell me which beer yeah. is which. So this reminds me when I was, you know, a teenager or uh -huh. my, in my twenties. I used to drink Pilsen. Okay. But, you know, when you get older, you turn to light, lighter beer. Is that so, what happens? So from Pilsen, I started drinking Imperial. Okay. Which is the most common Costa Rican beer. Yes. And sometimes I actually enjoy this Bavaria. This is the most expensive of them all, and uh, it's way lighter. Okay, so it's lighter. So I'm pretty sure. I'll, I'll, I'll hit it. Okay, Pablo, do you have the, uh, the, the, oh, the beer bottle opener? I think I may have left that in the kitchen. While he's getting that, if you can, uh, you're taking your glasses off, really wrap it up. So there's this no, there's is, no. This is a tie. This is a tie. That's the best thing I could find, you know, at hand. Okay. So, let's have a look. I think Pablo is now looking for the beer opener. I think it's on the side, Pablo. Uh, on the side. So what we're going to do is I'm going to mix up each one. Okay. And uh, I'm going to then mix them up, give them to you, and right. uh, you have to confirm. Okay. Okay. So here we no go. Problem. Pablo, thank you much. Our, our tools guy. See if you can recognize them by the sound. No. <laughs> <laughs> that might be too difficult. Okay, so let's go with this one. And obviously there's no pressure on you. I don't know if you'll be able to hold your head up high next time you go into a bar. Almost all right. So these are definitely, perhaps, the epitome of the Tasty Tico treat, right? So, let's pull them in the glass, let's let them settle a little bit. As you say, five o'clock somewhere, right? It's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> and guys, we're not going to be doing... I'm pretty sure some of my co-workers are already... <laughs> I'm sure they are. It is currently 11.34 Costa Rica time, CST. Okay, so here we go. They all, they're all pretty similar colour. So guys, let's make it interesting, shall we? Let's mix up. Which one's which? Okay, so we're going to start with this one. So if you hold your arm out, give me your hand. Okay, have a swig of that. Don't necessarily call it out yet. <laughs> Tasty tea good treats indeed. Mm. Now you like that? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So, 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 that's, really nice. so that's your number one. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's go for our number two. Guys, if you've come down here, you probably have a good idea about, you know, you've probably tried this one, maybe this one, and you come back. Okay, that's your second one, and now your last beer of the morning. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, finishing off that one. Okay, so. Imperial Bavaria Chill Pilsen. Okay, so your number one was what? Imperial Bavaria Chill Pilsen. Oh, okay, so take off the uh, take off the blindfold. You told me number one was Imperial. Okay, unfortunately, oh, number shit. one was Pilsen. <laughs> you got number two right. That was Bavaria Chill. So I switched these two. So it's a very similar taste. Oh, they are similar. Okay, yeah, I, I, similar. I have an understanding here for well, me. Well, Pablo, very similar taste between oh, Pilsen and... Pablo is shocked behind I'm the camera. I'm a Pilsen drinker. Oh. I do know the difference. Sorry. Oh, okay. So well, pa I'm, a, I'm a rum drinker, so that's why I... Okay, so you should have been on the center. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. So you got 33%. You got one, out, again, one out of three. But uh, guys, you'll have to try this yourself. See if there's a difference. I've heard otherwise. But hey, Derek, I appreciate you coming in. Fist pump, oh, corona, so <laughs> corona climate, there you go. <laughs> Guys, I hope you enjoyed that. We did go a little bit long. Thank you for all your questions. Loads of you got in touch. Can we're I, gonna, can I drink You this? can finish the person. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You got through that interview. Um, we're going to get through as many questions as, as we can on the comments box below. As always, don't forget to get in touch with us. Every Tuesday, 11 o'clock in the morning, Costa Rica time, we will be live um, for the next few months to answer your questions. So from myself, Adam Baker, Derek Thank Schager, you. Hasta la próxima. Hasta la próxima.